kept you waiting, huh? closer look at the Metal Gear Solid 5 watch. A little bit odd case shape. It's going to be wider at the top and narrower at the bottom here. So at the top diameter uh, going straight across is 42.2 millimeter and closer to the bottom here is going to be 39.3 millimeters. So about a two millimeter difference. Um, the lug to lug is 52 and a half millimeter. And when we come to the side you can actually see it's it slopes down here. So on the thicker side, it's going to be 14.6 millimeters and on, it's gonna slope down to the 13.6 uh, millimeter at the base there. So about another millimeter or so there. Um, lug width is going to be 22 millimeters. So if you have uh, a bunch of straps you wanna put this on, it's going to work. So this watch is constructed of stainless steel um, with a few different finishing. So on the front we have a vertical brushed finish and this black PVD, uh, I don't know if it's necessarily a bezel, but it is a insert here. It's being held onto these four screws. The pushers are matte. It looks like those are bead blasted. If we turn it to the side here, you're going to see that horizontal brushing as well here. And then the bottom bezels, I'm sorry, the bottom bevels here are polished in a very high polish. Same thing when it comes to the back of these, uh, of the lugs, those are high polish as well. Case back is vertical brushed and the bracelet itself is vertical, uh, vertically brushed as well. So a lot of brushing with a few areas of polish and then these black PVD coated areas. Very good contrast in materials. Very, it shows it off very well. Um, you could tell they put a lot of work into this. So if you're thinking to yourself that you've seen this watch before, um, you're not alone. This is actually an homage to the Seiko Digiborg 757. Uh, James Bond wore that in the film Octopussy. And Hideo Kojima being a big movie buff took great inspiration uh, from that watch to make Venom Snake's watch. So let's go ahead and break this dial down here. So here we have the time with the seconds, PM indicator right there. You have the month, the day, and the date right there at the bottom. And then off to the top right here, it shows you all the different functions that this, that this watch has. So right now we're on normal time. There's alarm, timer, uh, data, chronograph, and dual time. So we push in the pusher once, we're gonna notice the arrow goes to the dual T, and that's obviously for dual time here. So here's our local time, and then there's our second time zone right there. Uh, we push it again, and it should go over to the chronograph function. So start, stop, lap, sorry, that's reset. If we start it here, obviously press the lap there. There we go. So next mode here, we have the data mode. And this is going to basically show your times for the, you know, best laps and average speed, everything like that. This is the timer function. So I have it set here for 10 seconds. So we're going to start it. It's got to count down. Offers a really cool countdown timer and uh, alarm. Then here's just the normal alarm function. So you can set. And then here, if you press start, little alarm button's gonna show up there. So we'll turn it off. And then back to the uh, normal mode here. So around the outside in white, you're gonna see a 60 second track, which is very cool. Um, I like the color contrast. Even with these pops of yellow with this crosshair here in this line right here, this divider line. It looks very cool, very retro. And this watch also does have a light here. This wired button is going to second as a light. So here, let's see if I can 
black out the light here. So it's gonna stay lit for about two seconds. I wish it stayed lit for a little bit longer, maybe three or four, but there we go. So there's the light button here. So moving down to the bracelet here, we, like I said before, we have a vertical brushing. And I don't know if I call these an H-Link style bracelet. Um, I don't know necessarily what to call it, but it is just one solid piece. Um, solid, solid links, um, solid end links. So it's very nice. It has like a little bit of movement here. So it off, it's gonna be very comfortable on the wrist. We have two micro adjusts, uh, wired etched into the clasp there. Polished push buttons, stamped clasp. Uh, no diver's extension. And I know it's not a dive watch. Um, it's more of a field watch, a digital field watch. So I just wish there was a little bit more micro adjustments because there's no half links or anything like that. But you know, we're just nitpicking here at this point. It also does come with a NATO strap. Um, and this is what Snake actually wears in the game. He wears the watch on this NATO. So let me go ahead and pop that on actually. Gonna take off my Ingersoll Scoville here. I put this on the Tropic strap. I'm gonna have to review this soon, but let me go ahead and take that off. All right, so here we are. This is the watch on my seven and a half inch wrist. So like I said, very chunky, but overall it is super cool. Especially if you're a Metal Gear Solid fan. I'm pretty sure that's why you're gonna buy this watch is if you are a Metal Gear Solid fan. Or you just can't get your hands on a Digiboard. Kind of thick. Obviously this is gonna be a watch where you're not gonna wear with a suit and tie or anything like that. But um, it is a very cool little piece. Let me go ahead and put this on the uh, NATO strap. All right, before I put on the NATO strap, let me just show you guys the case back here. So like I said before, vertical brushing um, with this high polish lugs here on the case back, held together by four screws. And we have wired Metal Gear Solid 5. Uh, this is a limited edition watch, so it is 2411 out of 2500. Water resist of 10 bars, stainless steel, made in China. So. That is the case back. It seems to be laser etched, or maybe it's even printed on there. It doesn't feel like there's a lot of depth in the lettering. So let me go ahead and put this on the NATO. So here it is on the NATO strap. Um, I don't know if I'd keep it on here because it, it does sit very high. You know, you could tell from right there, it just sits very high on the wrist. Maybe if I had a mechanical arm, didn't matter, but I don't think I'm going to be wearing it on this, but let me show you guys this, uh, this NATO up close. It gets considerably thicker whenever this NATO pops on. Um, so much so where this is actually about 21 millimeters high. That's very thick. It's about two millimeters thick per side. So it gets up there in uh, thickness really quick. The buckle, and all these fittings here are like, I believe a plastic. I don't think these are metal. At least they don't feel like metal. Um, but as you can see here, like these are, I don't know if those are burned in uh, to prevent any like fibers from coming apart or anything like that. But it's, it's a little stiff, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna be wearing this on the NATO at least not on this NATO anyways. But if you're into that kind of thing, you know, it's gonna offer a much different look, but it's just slightly too thick for me. I, I, I'm not gonna be able to wear it on that. I'm gonna switch it back over to the bracelet. All right, so that was a lot more difficult than I thought it was gonna be. Um, I prefer it on the bracelet anyways. So let's go ahead and talk the pros and the cons of this watch. All right, so let's start off with the cons of this watch first. So it's gonna be a little bit chunky, uh, a little bit heavy. So if you have a smaller wrist, it might be a little bit uh, over cumbersome to wear the watch. Um, next thing is going to be this light button here. It's only gonna be, like I said, for two seconds, gonna be lit up. So I wish it would stay lit a little bit more. 
um, just to make sure that you have the correct time date you don't have to keep pressing it or anything like that and then coming down to the clasp there are no half links um, only two micro adjust ports and then uh, no divers extension or anything like that when it comes to the clasp um, but yeah so that, that are, those are gonna be my cons positives I mean what else is more to say this is the watch from Metal Gear Solid 5. So if you are a big Metal Gear Solid fan, you're gonna do yourself, just do yourself a favor and uh, find this watch and buy it. It is gonna be a little bit hard to find, um, especially on eBay. I know they have some watches that are $2,000 for this watch. This watch is not worth $2,000, at least not to me, it might be to you. But, um, if you could find this watch for under, I'd say $800. If you could find this watch under $800, it would be good, um, a good investment. I think new, this watch came out to like $400. But, you know, over the years, this has gone up quite a bit. Like I said, it is limited edition. So if you could find them in the seven, $800 range for something that moderately used, um, you're gonna be in good shape. New, these watches I see go up to like two grand. I would do, I would not spend two grand on this watch unless you're like the biggest Metal Gear Solid fan. Um, but overall, you're gonna really enjoy this watch um, if you're a big Metal Gear Solid fan. This watch I got, a, I get a lot of compliments on this thing. Definitely a lot of compliments. A lot of people look at it and say, hey, what kind of watch is that? What kind of watch is that? So you're gonna get a lot of looks very good conversation starter. Um, so yeah, I couldn't recommend this watch anymore. Um, but like I said, that's coming from a biased place of being a Metal Gear Solid fan. So, well, those are my thoughts. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip that camera and then get you guys on out of here. And there it is, the Metal Gear Solid 5 watch. Quite possibly one of my favorite watches in my entire collection. Um, I know I say that a lot, but this is, this is really one of them. Um, if you guys are Metal Gear Solid fans, I can't recommend this watch enough. Just knowing that it's in the game, one for one, you feel like Venom Snake um, when you wear it. Great conversation piece. It's with, you know, I mean, obviously it has its flaws, but I couldn't recommend it anymore. So thanks for watching. Um, I'm going to pop up a couple videos here. Go ahead and take a look at each one. Um, and uh, if you guys have not subscribed yet, subscribe. <laughs> I'll catch you guys on the next one, man. Thanks.